How's it going YouTube? Nipper Tap here from Next Gen Rehab and in today's video I'm going to be going over if a career in exercise physiology is the correct career for you. Uh, now I get this question uh, quite a bit, you know Nick I've been going through school maybe third, fourth, fifth year kind of deciding where I want to go with my degree and is, is the exercise physiology route correct for me. Uh, and so you know when it comes to this question you do want to ask yourself uh, a few things. Um, first off is kind of where do you see yourself kind of over the course of the next maybe five to seven years? Would it be potentially working with uh, rehab clients? Is it uh, working with athletes? Um, or do you actually, uh, you know, have a passion for working with individuals that uh, need assistance uh, through the exercise therapy realm that have chronic diseases, right? And so that's uh, specifically where the exercise physiology comes in. Um, when it comes to exercise physiology, and I've done a couple videos on what specifically you do in that field, but to kind of summarize it, it's exercise prescription for uh, individuals who have chronic disease. So we're talking about things like cardiovascular disease, uh, pulmonary disease, metabolic disease, um, you know, uh, being overweight, diabetes, cancer, that sort of thing. Uh, and so we definitely do take more of a scientific uh, uh, approach, not to say that the other fields don't, but um, this one uh, relies heavily on uh, understanding um, certain medical terminologies, um, medications, how they interact in the body um, when it comes to exercising and um, evidently how you can uh, create a safe program for these individuals when they come out of, um, you know, for example, uh, heart surgery. Um, if they uh, do have pulmonary issues, how can you exercise them safely while using an oxygen tank? Um, if they're diabetic, how can you uh, prevent um, hypoglycemia um, if they, or um, on the other end if their blood triggers are, are uh, too high? Um, you know, uh, what are the proper precautions to take uh, from that and when uh, you, you want to safely exercise someone. So there are some questions that you do need to ask and obviously there is um, uh, a little bit of extended uh, schooling uh, involved when it comes to exercise physiology um, or becoming clinical exercise physiologist. So the main thing I do recommend um, first off is while you are in school uh, to do some sort of co-op, um, get some sort of work experience in the field, whether that's working in a cardiac rehab setting or any sort of uh, setting that works with individuals that have chronic disease. Um, <clears throat> if there um, are any uh, uh, courses uh, of exercise physiology that are involved in your school, I would highly recommend taking that. And uh, obviously, you know, exploring your avenues of what kind of uh, certification that uh, your area does offer. So the main one kind of uh, I'd say the gold standard is through the American College of Sports Medicine that do require um, some prerequisites and again these are found in, in some of my other videos uh, so you can have a look at that um, one more thing I, I would uh, mention is uh, you know having um, kind of the desire and that drive to work with uh, this population because uh, you know th there are times when it can get challenging you do have to um, you know tailor your exercise program to a very wide variety of clientele yes you know some of them do have a chronic disease but you got to remember right um, when it comes to, to things like heart disease maybe it's um, you know a marathon runner that has been doing exercise their entire life um, but because of family genetics or hereditary issues they ended up um, developing heart issues right cardiovascular disease maybe some sort of cardiomyopathy so you know you're, you're going to train that person a little bit differently than you would you know so let's say a 85 year old uh, individual that's never exercised a day in their life that's had a heart attack but on top of that they also have diabetes um, you know um, high cholesterol other chronic diseases so yes within the ranges and within the actual um, chronic disease classification classifications themselves you will get a very wide uh, variety and wide spectrum of clientele um, so it's, it's a little bit different obviously than training let's say you know younger individuals um, individuals that don't have chronic disease athletes and so you know you, you definitely do take a little bit of a different approach and that's why I do highly recommend um, going ahead and uh, uh, exploring these avenues um, either through some sort of uh, work experience volunteer work um, courses through your school uh, to see really if this is uh, something that you like but it is a very very uh, rewarding career um, it's, it's a great way to um, to kind of uh, build experience um, it's a great way to uh, uh, get kind of more exercise knowledge uh, within a medical field right so uh, hopefully you found this uh, video helpful um, if you do have any further questions please leave them in the comment section below and until next time my name is Nick Pratap from Next Gen Rehabilitation we'll see you in the next video